Hello everybody, it's Mike Levin on Wednesday, July 27th, 2016 at around 2.40 p.m. And I thought I'd get in this uh, really important step in my videos where as I have been stepping through every cell in a spreadsheet and evaluating whether a function needs to be executed and executing it, I have not, however, been uh, updating it back into the spreadsheet. I've been leaving those columns uh, empty and not actually doing the update even though we're setting the stage for it. So I am going to do that update in this video and see uh, how quickly and smoothly I can pull that off. I've been doing a little bit of experimenting here and the real uh, issue or problem is that Whenever I spin through one of these spreadsheets, I basically pull in the whole row's values and feed it in as a parameter uh, to these functions uh, so that every, uh, every column is available in case parameters happen to be over in columns that haven't been got into yet by the time you're up to here. So in other words, it should support the URL being to the right of uh, the function that needs a URL as a parameter. So somewhere right about here on every row is when I'm doing the evaluations and not on the cell itself. So when I update back to the correct cell that I need to be addressing, I need to know its numeric index because uh, these uh, objects that are created in Python under gspread uh, are numerically indexed even though they're uh, x by y, row by column um, uh, objects. And that's the way that you do batch updates. Batch updates work best with, uh, let's see, update underscore cells. Update underscore cells. There it is. That's the batch update right there. And it's against the cell lists. And cell lists are, uh, have a numeric index to them. When you have an individual cell, you can address it by row column value, but we're going for something more of a update all at once. All right, so that means over here, uh, a couple of things. Uh, first, we need to know where to update back to, and I've done a little bit of running the output. And one of the dip things that's different about this code now than the last time uh, that you were here is that I put I comma a cell in enumerate cell range. So whenever you're walking through an object in Python that's iterable uh, and you're doing uh, for a cell in cell range, you can also just pop out the internal index by just using arbitrary uh, counter variable name and then put wrapping whatever you're iterating through inside enumerate. And now suddenly you know what uh, item in the iteration you're on, which also happens to be uh, the index that we're gonna use for updating back to uh, the cell range. Uh, okay, I know a lot of this doesn't make sense for people who haven't followed along with the development of this project or, or prior versions, but basically I needed to uh, be sitting on top of the equivalent of I, but which I could uh, get by just knowing what function name and, and what row uh, I'm on. So that's this little bit of magic here, uh, the row you're on times blah, 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 blah. But at any rate, it works out to be the same exact numeric index, and I just replace this with... Uh, the function name that we're on. So that's what I'm about to do here right now. So these functions have to be changed a little. Uh, they actually need to be given a, a smarter API. Uh, inside the functions, I'm just printing, which is what's responsible for uh, the output at the bottom uh, when I run uh, this here generally. Uh, it's just print statements. In this case, the print statements are both now mixed in with the loop and the function. Uh, the function is responsible for uh, this one, the print statement inside of it, and the loop is responsible for, for these. And we can 
start to fix that now by returning a value, a value instead of um, printing it. We'll do that for both. But we're actually making an API. In addition to just returning that value, we're actually going to return a, a response code. So it's always going to be a tuple getting returned, 200 comma, 200 comma. Okay. So these guys now, I'll save it and run them both just to make sure uh, it all works right. Uh, they're returning a 200 success code. And in this case, it's returning the URL for title. <laughs> and the, uh, the length of the URL field for description. And I know that's not really what they're going to be doing, but uh, this is for the sake of getting the, the I.O. all wired up properly. So um, I'm going to go with the uh, nomenclature of uh, the request object. So uh, I believe it's success code, success underscore code. And this is tuple unpacking, something comma something equals something else which you know to be a tuple being returned so it's success code comma i don't know it's going to be the new text that goes into a cell so uh, new text at first i was avoiding this um, pep8 style underscoring of all your variable names for so long because it was so noisy to look at but i'm starting to get into it okay so now we're sitting on top of values here and i think it's a good time to uh to execute this stuff, save, restart and run all, always a good idea. Okay, there's not gonna be any output. Well, there is, there's the output from inside the loop, but you'll see that the URL line went away. And uh, this is a good sign, no errors is a good sign. Now I'm gonna get rid of uh, all that printing stuff that I'm doing here. Although I will need to keep in mind that I'm going to be needing something from in there for later. Uh, but now we can print uh, our success code or our new text. In fact, let's just print the new text. And we'll be able to see that we are getting uh, return values now uh, from the functions. There we go, back like the way it was in the old videos. But these values each need to end up in the correct cell. So um, here where we're executing our functions, uh, we are no longer on the cell where we collected them. So I can't simply just update new text back to what is the temptation, a cell dot value. We're long past a cell dot value because we've stepped along in that row and we're essentially at the very right hand edge of the row. So if we tried to update back, it would just always end up in the description column. And that's no good. So we need to update our uh, original parent object by uh, numeric index. Uh, and that's uh, this here. Uh, but what numeric index? And if we were to put in zero, that would be uh, this guy here, one, two, three, four, five, and so on down to whatever 37 times three is minus one because of zero based indexes. And that's not what we want at all, but we do know that we can get it by this magic formula here that I did before the video in order to spare you that uh, pain. And I'm making sure I'm getting the right columns in my copy. I paste that in there. Uh, but we uh, know, for example, the function we're on, because the function is the key, because that's what's going in as the string here to actually get the real function out. So this is the name of the function where, where we just executed in string form, which is exactly what we need, because we plug that in here into our call names and find the index, and that is pointing back to the correct place in the original cell range. And so we are going to run this. It's not going to do the update yet, but uh, this sets up a, bef a good before and after, because if there's no errors here, I believe it's success assured. Yeah, it's going to be one of those success assured moments. So this is our before and after. This is the before, no values filled in. And back here in our 
uh, API, they're using the same variable names we are even. So I can just pick up that whole thing, which is almost the whole thing I need, uh, not quite, because uh, we have an object here that it is the method of. Uh, it's a method of worksheet. Worksheet is an instance of good sheet connect open lookups, lookups, uh, and worksheet sheet one, worksheet sheet one. Okay, so it's simply known as worksheet, and it, we don't put it in an iterative loop because that would cause batch updates over and over and over, which completely uh, defeats the purpose. Worksheet, worksheet dot up there. That's it. This should. Uh, be the system still just that many lines of code uh, but what it does given functions that can be quite a bit fancier than this but uh, given functions that are written like this we should be able to do quick updates and lookups against uh, sheets that are submitted as requests simply by running it drum roll please once it gets to the end we have a batch update. Ah, or cell list did not defined. Cell range that was anticlimactic, but serves me right for copying and pasting my example out of uh, the API documentation. I was incorrect. They are not using the same uh, variable names. They're using slightly different. Restart and run all. Drum roll, please. To the bottom, to the bottom, it finished. Update. Is there an error lurking? I don't think there's an error lurking, but it didn't do its twinkle thing. I'm going to force a refresh. Did it not update? cell range. Ah, print. I am not truly updating it. First, we don't need to print the new text anymore, uh, but we do need to make that thing equal to something. So we are making that long thing there set to be equal to the new text. Oh, keeping my mistakes intact for your benefit. If you want some differentiating thing between my videos and other people's, it's that this. Drum roll, please take three. Ah, uh, attribute R. Okay, we'll have one more for four. Uh, just string object. String object has no attribute element. Okay. So cell range plugging the index in. We are sitting on top of new text. Oh, it's the value. I am not invoking the value method of that. Now I should look at some way of shortening that. This has reached that, you know, 79 character pep eight li uh, limit type thing. Uh, and I will. after drum roll number four. Bam! Success assured moment. That's it right there. This function here is returning the URL. And this function here was returning the length of the URL. And with this basic framework, this is an enormously powerful system. Now there are a few other things like say this list was uh, 20,000 long and you wanted it to process a thousand at a time and go in 20 chunks. Uh, I have things lurking in the background here uh, called uh, chunkulate to handle that sort of stuff. Uh, but we'll be getting to that in later videos. This now handles basic competent uh, batch update uh, lookups from a spreadsheet where of course you know a video coming up real soon I'll turn this into a real title tag 
uh, using some work that I did in a prior video. Uh, and then, you know, each of these will become something uh, interesting and SEO relevant. And we'll look at recycling uh, a single HTML fetch per URL so it's not inefficient across URL fetches for every column. Uh, and things like that, uh, archiving the HTML of every page somewhere other than being field stuffed into the spreadsheet, which is possible, but makes them too heavyweight. And you have the power of your local machine here, so keeping in synchronization some local data on your local machine where the data is voluminous uh, and needs to be repeatedly correlated back to a spreadsheet and all the stuff that's supposed to live in a spreadsheet for easy sharing and collaboration uh, with other people. So anyway, that has been a critical connecting of the dots uh, of this uh, Pipulate project and uh, specifically updating back into the original uh, cell range selection uh, through the gspread uh, package API and sort of updating them back in just one giant uh, swoop here so that we can do ad hoc uh, SEO and social media investigations within Jupyter Notebook. Thanks for joining me. Hope to see you again soon. And don't forget to subscribe.